Hey everybody. Are we so so this is okay, put this in the episode. Is this side quest or what is this? Uh this is I don't know, I think this is just the channel. I think this is just extra play. Is it extra play? Okay, yeah. welcome to extra play. Welcome to extra play. We did it. Hey. We got it, we got it, we figured out where we're coming from. Hey everybody. I'm I'm Dan Emmons. <laughs> I was just about to say I'm Dan. I'm the other Dan. No, he's the, the other I'm Dan. I'm the other Dan. I'm You're the main Dan. I'm the Dan who Je got, what, Jesus. We need to start off. <laughs> this is really bad. <laughs> Let's play Bastion before we, like, <laughs> screw this up anymore. Dan Floyd, how are you doing I'm today? I'm doing all right. How all are right. you, Dan? I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm ready to play some Bastion. <laughs> all right. Uh, I was I was going to do an intro, but gee, whatever. This, all right. Let's just let Rex handle it for us. Oh, Rex. Oh, Rex. I have not played this since it came out. Yeah. I played this a little while ago on stream. So I'm interested to see what you what what you remember of it because when I redid it there were a lot of things proper I... store is supposed to start at the beginning, ain't so simple with this one. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. So what do you think about this opening scene? I kind of want to talk about. Up. Oh jeez. So this okay. Bastion, we'll talk about what I just said in a minute. In case of trouble. Because th that moment right there is sort of what sets the entire tone for this. But this was the, uh, so here's the setup for this mechanic, right? You just, you're lying in bed, nothing is happening. And when you, it'll, it'll just like let you lie there forever. But it, when you move the stick, that's when your character gets up. And that's when the narrator said he gets up, right? Yes. Yeah, no, no, it's like, it's an immediately like, it waits for you. But then the fact that the narrator instantly responds to what you did, the very first thing you did does immediately cue into you that like, what he's saying, is like, directly tied to what you are doing. Right, and that's the entire purpose of this tutorial level, other than teaching you the mechanics, is reinforcing Ryan that in your head. up under his feet as it point the way. He don't stop to wonder why. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hold on. What am I doing? This is part of it. Yes. Okay. That's a good idea. Yes, that's... I, want, I did that when we had the other profile, and it didn't stick, apparently. Okay. Cool. Yeah, this is for, probably more for you guys' benefit, really, but... Yes. So... A lot of what... The be Sebastian is a game that gets, um, just, lying in the just the, the, like, a lot of people point out the narrator is some of their favorite parts, right? Well, it's a touching reunion. And I think that one of the things that really sets the narration of this game apart from other games is that it reacts to the player. Absolutely. It's just, just in the fact that there's so much, it, it's novel, right? And I'm, in a lot of games that do this, like the new King's oh, Quest man. that came out pretty recently. Yep. Yep. Uh, games that react to the player and actually like show the player's agency, or at least it, it shows the player that they care, right? It's just sort of one of these cool things where they they get to say, hey, like your actions matter. And it's sort of the first time, every time I've ever heard, like seen somebody play this, they tend to like give you a little laugh, right? When they when they first <laughs> when they first hear, I think it's this moment actually up here, but like, cause you, they, so this is, so let me just do this for a second. I'm just gonna break shit. I can work. Is that your cat? That's my cat. Oh my god. Being whiny. For a while. <laughs> that, right <laughs> that, there. Yes. Yeah, that was the first moment when I was playing this game that I was like, that I was like, okay, I get it. Um, <laughs> because they, first of all, they give you a hammer and then they don't actually tell you anything to do with it until you get over here where you fight something. And then while you're fighting, you're probably gonna break stuff because they literally put him inside a wall uh, that he breaks through. Yep. And then you realize, oh, hey, I can break stuff. That's pretty fun. So you go around breaking stuff, and then the game actually recognizes the fact that you did something that you didn't necessarily have to do. Right? Something about the responsive narrator in this one actually impresses me even more than it being used in an adventure game, because it, I feel like the number of interactions available to you in an, inter in an adventure game is much more limited than in an action one. Right, right, but right. The fact that they can account have to account for so many more things, so many more ways you might interact with the world in this, is e still feels even more impressive. I don't know if it actually functionally is way more work or way more impressive, but it feels that way. Lots of things that they don't actually have to do tons and tons of work because if you think about it in terms of every time they ask me it's like hey why don't why don't we have like huge branching narratives like well because doing all of that takes a lot of work and like having to map out all of the possibilities of things that players would want to do is a lot of work but in cases like this you can just sort of get away with a single voice stab and just like predict what players are going to do so even in just like the most basic These sense you can just make this whole game without them so figure out what players do like just by watching them and then just add in voice stabs Sometimes for the most common you just ones need a drink. I wish I had this voice. Yeah, I know, isn't it? Like, <laughs> no price. <laughs> oh my god, I, I met. So I met the. Oh, what is his name? Logan, the the narrator for this. I met him oh, at, at um awesome. at some packs, and I had to like, that like 
like very tightly control myself not to have him say basically anything in his voice. <laughs> but it's 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 wonderful. Just in general. Phones everywhere. Oh god. <laughs> oh, it's all gone. Oh Jesus. Professional. Prof professionalism. <laughs> what is crystal burn? You'd find the memento from uh, girl. Okay. Always use the fancier. Oh, I don't even remember that. That's pretty intense. Just like, like, the, the moments of, like, still standing. I really like this setup of narration because it makes the world feel so much more alive when you can just sort of put in all of these little tiny hints and bits for you to find and let the player, they're not really opting in because they don't know what is where or what's going to happen, but it's kind of like opting into the pieces of narrative you want, right? Yeah, and it's, it's like flavor text that you don't have to work for or go somewhere else to read. It can just appear while you're busy doing the thing that you're wanting to do. Right, it's... I like, I like the analogy to flavor text because it's very much along the lines of, like, the... Like the magic cards, right? Just things at the bottom that are that are there if you want them. And when people always ask me, like, how how do you think people should tell stories? It's like, well, I really really like the way games do it when they do it while you're doing other things because I think this game shows like you can have a fight scene and still pay attention to a couple lines of narration. Like you can still manage to tell a good story even when you're when you're busy. At least you can manage to tell that story while the player is performing right. action. You can be right? efficient with information. Yeah. Right, exactly. Right, like you like you can even see. <coughs> excuse me, how they are like pacing out the narration in between the beats of combat. Right, right, right. So there's something called an interest curve, and I know we talked about it on the show before. Yeah, sure. Um, but essentially. Every time you have spikes in action, you want to have followed up with sort of a dip in interest so that players have time to recover. So that the next spike in action feels better by comparison, because if you just keep like spiking action up, up and up, you, you end up having a something that needs to constantly outdo itself or exhaust the player or exhaust the amount of content that you can have. Right. So it's just about being like uh, conservative with the amount of excitement that you can provide. I'm impressed with how well you're playing while <laughs> delivering this information. I, I streamed for like a year and a half. That's <laughs> like, true. You, you kind of need to be able to do it. You've had way more practice with this than I have. <laughs> it's 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 definitely a skill that you can work on. <laughs> I was trying to talk over Monster Hunter yesterday oh, I'm and doing sorry. very poorly. I'm sorry. That's okay. I need to learn. I'll learn. It's alright. We'll get there. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll help. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, the interest curve. So the interest curve is, is really interesting because you can map it to movies or, or, or music or even just lots of different media. In games especially, it's useful for because you can sort of map not only an entire game to it and that you have, like, the hook of the whole game and then each level is sort of has sort of its own uh, interest curve point. But then each interest curve, each level has its own interest curve and each fight, each encounter has its, has its own interest curve and, like, each moment can have its own interest curve. Like, Mario's jump has its own interest curve. And it's really interesting. Oh Jesus! Um, <laughs> That's a good perch for some target practice. And it's really interesting seeing the games that really execute on this well. You can really notice when uh, if you're looking for it. And I like the the thing about this is I, I really like figuring out like one of the things I always look like to do is figure out what do games do with their downtime because it's a it's a hard question sometimes is. Well, we need to do something that is on purpose less interesting than the rest of the game, or at the very least different enough that we're giving the players, you know, a break from the normal action. And I think that this, um, that the narration is sort of serving that purpose as, like, the down spikes in our interest right, curve for the you. combat. That makes sense. Like, you could also, I, like, you could yeah, also argue the that for some people, the combat is the downward interest bad curve, news the news downward news points on the narrative interest curve, right? Sure. And I don't have any idea how to map that, but I find it interesting just in terms of, like, based on what you care about, you can have an interest curve that sort of mirrors each other. Well, it's at the very least a difference in kind, right? Like, yeah. it's just, it's ver variation. So, I mean, people may be playing it for a different reason, but, uh, whichever, like, whichever point is the height for you, you're getting a bit of variety in it. Right. It's, like, the pacing of this is actually very, very good. Just in terms of, like, you get a new ability, you show off the new ability, here's a line. You, you use the ability, Rux is quiet. Like, there's very few times when you're actually fighting when Rux is talking. That's true. Yeah, it's, there, there's a couple places where he does, right. and it feels weird. Like, I don't know if we'll get there, but the, um... One sip of the spirits in that distillery, uh, and the kid will feel like a new man. I don't actually know if this is good, <laughs> but we're gonna do it. Alright. I've always, like, you, you always have to pick the, the one that 
potentially gives you more resources. Right. What, what, what weapons do you favor in this? Um, so I've beaten this game like three times, I think, and I always try to use something different each time. The first time I played it, which was the 360 version, which this is one, which this one is, I did like the machete because it's broken in half. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, and some other thing that wasn't the machete. Uh, and then I think I played it again on the PC. And I did some other shit. I don't even remember. It was cool. Whatever it was, just rest assured that it was awesome. <laughs> I believe you. Yes. Just is there is there much difference between the versions, or is it the same game? Um, I never it's very very it. similar. The iPad version is actually really good. Really. Um, because they they did the thing that a lot of ports don't, which is they re-examine their entire game for the purpose of of being on a mobile thing. So they cut some weapons, they moved around where other weapons were. Okay. And... That one was Maud, the tutor. Once taught this. the kid good manners. He never used them, though. Just, just like, I love the way that they can, they can, they tell stories. Like, they've gotten the entire, just like, one-line narrative explanation oh, down to a science. So large, yep. And it's, way. it's exactly what this narrative needs, because they just need, like, the quick little stabs, right? Because they saw, sad. like, the entire purpose of the reason why that that narrative moment was triggered on the end of a path so that I wouldn't run into another encounter while Rex was talking. Yep. It's hard to focus on what he's saying if you're trying to fight. Exactly. Oh god, oh, okay, alright, <laughs> alright. Hold, hold the phone. We need to, okay, alright. There you go, oh, okay. you got this. Oh, you, do see? I? <laughs> I mean, like, there's a lot of guys. Alright. Okay. Okay. Memory serves first boss here. Is this the... Is it? I have no idea, man. Or maybe it's just an encounter with a lot of little stuff. It takes a chunk of alloy, smell of barley, and spoil. You've played it more recently than I have. Maybe I should okay. Make you, I should make you play this. <laughs> I don't know. You're doing Maybe awfully you well. Yeah, I know. I, I, I'd, I'd like to. Oh, Jesus. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're doing fine. I don't remember that. <laughs> I'm doing fine. Oh. Oh, oh that's right. He on. breaks the floor when he hits. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was also that other moment, right? That was the first. Um, most people, uh, if you notice back at the beginning, where they had, where they introduced the roll ability, they did a, like, design no-no, and put, like, you, what you want to do is, you, when you give somebody, the player, a new technique, you want them to have a space to try it out, and essentially, immediately after you get the dodge roll, they put you on this narrow path, where it's very easy to fall off, because they want you to fall off, so they can trigger that rux line. Right. So it's actually really cool the way that, like, the... They set up the player in this entire level, or the, in the entire first level. Ooh, uh, it's probably fine. It's probably fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Uh, oh, uh, man. In order to, tri to trigger all of the like the Rux lines that, while they appear to be completely optional, are heavily, uh, in, like heavily desired by like. Essentially, the designers tried very hard to make you trigger Get them. Gotcha. Huh. Okay. Oh, okay. Everything is fine. I'm getting little blue bits. Okay. You watch his step. <laughs> Look, man. <laughs> he finds the core to the wharf district. He steals the city's heart. Might as well. So this is, if we're, if we're going to talk about intro curve, we might as well talk about this, right? This is the crescendo moment of, like, every, right. everything is terrible forever, and now we have to do our little, like, runaway piece. And I actually really like this one because it's just, it feels different than the other ones. Yeah. Because its resolution is different than we normally expect. It just keeps running. Somersault like crazy. See? Like, I like the, it's, like, there's so many things set up for you to, um, to, to... To trigger those moments because it's so imperative that you fall in love with this narrator. It's just like there's it's this entire game is predicated on that, and it's and the narrator like the way that I I sort of described it is that the the action game is okay, it's now not great, but the way that they integrate the narrative with it racist. is so good. Did anybody else survive? Sure enough, he finds another. He finds me. We talk for a spell. I try to let the kid down gently. This is the bastion, all right. Except no one else showed up. 
You want to take a break here? Yeah, let's go ahead wanna... and call it, and we will All be right. back with more next time. Alright, we will be back, and Dan will be playing Other Dan. Oh, jeez. The the not me Other Dan, the, the Other Dan who is not me. We'll be playing this one. Fantastic. Alright, <laughs> see you in the next one, guys. <laughs>